Hello my friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a spot poster like this inside of Photoshop, right? If you've not gotten your Smart Designer Premium Asset, now is the best time for you to get yours. Right? And the sci-fi and fantasy PSD pack is also available for you to all you need to do is click the link in the description of this video to get all these goodies for yourself we're having to say much let's jump right into this so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on file and new and i'm going to put the name here so it's going to be spot poster like this so inside here i'm just going to four by five inches and rgb click ok so a quick one um my foreground color this is the color code right and my background color this is the color code all right so click ok like this so the first thing i want to do go to adjustment layer click on solid color and i'm going to use a color white for this all right plain white color so going over to my resource file the link is in the description of this video right so not everything is inside of it. You have some of the things inside your graphic designer smart premium assets, right? So with this one, I'm just going to use this. This is the first image I'm going to be using. I'm going to position this somewhere here. Go back to my access file and bring in the next image. I'm just trying to map out where my images are going to be. Right, so I have this somewhere here. I'm going to make this bigger, significantly bigger. This is like the biggest image in all. Right, so with this one, um, I'd, I want to get rid of the edges. So select it, click on the mask, select your brush, make sure you turn off the cap locks, and um, get rid of the edges like this. Right, so turn on this one, create a mask for it. Now, the same thing you should do here. Hide these sharp edges. Okay. Okay, so having done that, the next thing I want to do is um, this image. I'd want to flip it. So, Ctrl T, right click and click on Flip Horizontal. So, I want you to face this direction instead. It makes a whole lot of sense this way. Alright, so I have image 1, image 2 now i can select the two of them and um increase the size just the way i want it right not too much just this way just this way okay and click enter when you're done okay so um while it's like this let's make the images pop so i'm starting with this one on top this one so with this selected go to filter and go to camera row now you need to pay, pay close attention to this part so while you're loading camera row like a couple of things you need to settings you need to use here so you can copy my settings here increasing the contrast and um, increasing the texture like this so if you watched my video on how to make images pop in Photoshop, you will understand all of this process that I'm trying to use here. So on details, I'm going to sharpen this up like this. And um, curves, click on the red. I'm going to throw in some red, not too much, just a little bit. And for the green also, I'm going to throw in some green. So this is the value for the red and this is the value for the green. When you're done, click OK. So this is what you have. So instead of replicating everything, this is before and this is after. So what I'll just do is hold down your Alt key and drag this point here to this image. And immediately you can see that it has taken up the same, um, the same properties as this image. So let me go on and bring in my final image, which is this one here. 
drag and drop inside like this of course this is going to be smaller than every other thing in this composition so the same thing i did with the uh, other images while it's selected like this move this down a little bit take this forward just a little bit so drag and drop the same way we used for the first and second image you can see that the image now has the same property as the other images right Okay, select this image, right, click on the camera roll, and I'm just going to make some adjustment to the image itself. Um, starting with the basics, I'm going to increase the texture like this. I'm going to increase the shadows and increase the contrast also, and um, probably reduce the blacks and click OK. You can see that it makes a whole lot of difference now. Okay, so this is exactly what I want and I'm good to go. Right? So the next thing I'm going to do is um, throw in some um, shadows. So create a new layer here, select your brush. Now what you want to do is go over to where you have your brush and do something like this. Let me turn this. So your brush surface should be flat like this right flat on the surface like this so you can turn it around i'm going to leave mine like this and you can see that the shape of my brush has changed so i'm just going to leave it this way and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the size of the brush small by using my bracket key so i'm just going to click twice on this part to make it bigger click one click two to create a realistic shadow here i'm clicking here too by making it small just so my shadow is realistic enough i think it's good this way i'm good to go so i'm just going to change the dynamic of my brush to the way it was before and this is good to go Okay, so selecting the first layer, which is the background layer, I'm going into my graphics design um, premium assets. To get yours, you can click the link in the description of this video to get your premium design assets. These are all of the things that you have inside of the assets. Now I'm going to be using this particular image here. Uh, so drag and drop. I'm going to rotate this. And I'm going to take this up like this, hold down shift and bring this part down. So you can reduce the opacity like this. Click on the mask, select the brush. Click on the mask and clean off these edges here like this. There you go. So the next thing I'm going to do is Still inside of the premium backgrounds, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go inside the blue and I'm going to use this image. So this is how I'm going to use it. So drag and drop inside like this and um, hold down shift and increase on these sides. So with your mask selected, make sure you clean off the hard edges like this right clean up the hard edges until you have something like this and um, easy peasy 
adjustment layer and hue and saturation click on colorize and uh, set the hue to exactly what I'm going to be using here so I'm going to go towards this part here like this that I have this so I can reduce the opacity and I can choose to use mine or leave mine at 92 but there's nothing bad leaving it at 100 right but I'm just going to leave mine this way I'm going to conceal some parts more adjustment layer on the topmost layer click on color balance now this is where things begin to get interesting so on the mid-tones I'm going to tilt towards the red on the highlights I'm going to tilt towards the yellow to give it that golden effect in the shadows I'm going to add a little bit of blue not too much and I'm just going to leave it this way so I can reduce the blue for the shadows so basically this is what I have let me see reduce for the mid-tones and add some more yellow to it okay so that's basically color balance you can see how blended and how um how nice this is so i'm going over to my text i took our time to type all of this so that we don't spend all the old time trying to put in name and use the font again the fonts that i used for this text that you're seeing here it's inside of the smart designer premium asset right so you can get yours and we're all on the same page as regards these resources right so create a new layer with my foreground selected i'm just going to do something like this just like this right something like this and um, you can change the blend mode to any one of your choice but I already have in mind what I want to use. So I'm just going to toggle between all of this. So I let you see what works and what doesn't work. For me, I might as well leave it at normal. Like this. This is just perfect for me. Then I can um, increase the size just like this. And everything else stays the same. create new layer and revert the foreground color to the background color with this color selected i'm going to click once and i'm going to change the blend mode to linear dodge add so you guessed right we're going to add some light effects to this design to make it pop more so ctrl j i'm just going to duplicate this light i created i have one here i have one somewhere here but i'm going to make sure it's behind that first little image in the front so I'm going to click and drag this here. I just made a duplicate copy of it. I'm putting this here also. So that I can have a nice reflection on the 23. Right. So don't mind the first one that says 6. But stick with the 23. That's what matters. Right. So you have this. hue and saturation you can change the hue and saturation like this by moving your slider up or down you can see the kind of changes i'm making to this design right so if you want your design to take this shape you can play with your hue and saturation slider and um, increase or decrease this slider or 
the hue as the case may be but i'm gonna leave mine like this this way and it's good to go all right guys if this video was helpful to you make sure you don't forget to click the like button and don't forget to share and lastly don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next video just above